Welcome back to the Shelley Proclamation. My name is Paul. And I'm Thomas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and we're on part five today of The Reign of Terror. We're enjoying it. We've, it's our second animated episode. We've enjoyed the first one, um, first animated episode back in episode four. Um, we're enjoying the serial so far. Give us a like and a subscribe down below. That's great. Add your comments about the story and what you're liking and your thoughts on it and uh, any questions for the end of season one roundup as well. That'd be good if you could pop those there and we'll try and cover them um, if we can. But apart from that, we should probably just crank straight on, shouldn't we, Thomas? Let's do it. Oh, Mr. Pinstripe is a, is a bad guy. Mm. It was apparently the case that um, William Russell, who plays Ian, he was the one who... Apparently, he suggested they should do a story set in the French Revolution. So, Oh, really? So this was his fault? Sorry, I did. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I I, so. I'm loving this story. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good one, actually. Yeah, yeah. Doctor's chin looks a bit weird there. <laughs> yeah, it looked a bit like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Susan? We're not comparing William Hartnell to Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Jabba We're that. saying that an animated depiction of William Hartnell for one shot vaguely resembled Jabba the Hutt. That was a nice, nice effort there. That's good. That's how you. That's how you should use a gun. Just throw it. Don't fire it. <laughs> throw it at someone. Is Ian gonna jump up on that chain and? Yeah. Oh, classic. This is quite sort of swashbuckling, isn't it? Quite sort yeah, of it is a bit. Pirates of the Caribbean. -y. That's a great shot. That that shot we just saw of Hartnell there, definitely based on a. A real life that's just a closer version of it there um definitely based on an actual shot from probably from an unearthly child maybe i, I think it might be right oh. jabber the hartnell's back there jabber the hartnell <laughs> <laughs> he's just got ian chained up in a metal bikini <laughs> oh <like>. god <laughs> Chesterton. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> well, and again, <laughs> welcome back to two men have a random conversation. <laughs> I was watching Doctor Who. <laughs> the thing is, Ian was chained up in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But there's a shadow of the candle on the wall there, and it's like, would a candle make a black shadow? Does a flame make a shadow? It definitely makes some kind of pattern on the wall, but probably not that dark. I mean, it looks the like flame a cat. Is the, the flame is the light, though, isn't it? Yeah. It wouldn't. It would. It wouldn't cast a shadow. Exa yeah. Would exactly. It? Exactly. The flame would be <laughs> the brightest part of the shadow. It, it's the source of light, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. God, this animation's rubbish. <laughs> this, this is a shambles. <laughs> Taking me right out of it now. Taking me right out of it. I yeah, can't watch anymore. I was completely <laughs> with it up to this point. The story, everything. Jabber the Hartnell. But that. Yeah, look again. A shadow of a candle. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? We're not, <laughs> we're not going to be able to unsee this now. <laughs> Yeah, it's completely right. It's it's like it's like putting the shadow of a light bulb on a wall. Yeah. <laughs> like your car headlights just cast big dark shadows in front of shadows it. Shadows everywhere. You actually turn them on during the day, where on a really sunny day, if you can't see what's in front of your car because of the glare, just you turn on the head. the brightness. Yeah. You see someone on their phone, there's just a black rectangle on their face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the cinema. Yeah. Uh, turn the phone on, it gets darker on their face. <laughs> <laughs> they turn it off and someone's like, excuse me, can you turn it back on, please? <laughs> oh, dear. This is what happens when you reverse the laws of physics. Yeah. <laughs> 
That really is reversing the polarity of the photon flow. <laughs> it's a trap. Your friend is betrayed. <laughs> no, that was brilliant. Another enjoyable one. Apart from Someone... the uh, dodgy candle physics, that was <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> and the big chins. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, I swear I saw. I swear someone wrote on one of the comments a while back that you know they really like the historical stories um, and they like this one, but they felt it was the it's viewed as one of the weakest of the historicals. But I, I've probably I've enjoyed it quite a lot so far. Yeah, I'd say um, it's up there with Marco Polo. Sure, Marco Polo, and I yeah maybe maybe I mean hard to maybe maybe it's hard to compare them because. We couldn't see any of Marco Polo moving. It looked great, and you thought, this would be so much better if I could watch it. Um, so an animated Marco Polo in colour would be lovely, yeah. um, with all those sets and photos. Um, but no, I thought that that episode was great, and um, I really enjoyed the the sort of uh, the, the kind of gunfight battle bit at the beginning. I thought that was done really well. That looked really good. Um, some nice ideas, even with a slightly odd weapon, throwing a gun at someone. Ian kind of thinking of history as a story that's already done, I suppose. Whereas Barbara's living it with real... In her mind, she's like, well, here are these real people that I'm living it with. Um, yeah. She's the kind of Amy Pond, time can be rewritten, um, sort of. Where, where Was that an accent you <laughs> there? Where was she from? Time can be rewritten. Like, <laughs> I think she's supposed to be Scottish, wasn't she? Like, <laughs> does, she does she have a Scottish accent when she's as Amy Pond? Uh, y- yes, yes. It's less yeah, she's thick, definitely though, Scottish. than Karen Gillan's full, full accent, isn't it, I think? I don't know. I'm not sure I've heard her voice being... I don't know if I've heard her speak in real life. I don't, I, I, doesn't she just use her normal voice? Yeah, well, sorry, regardless, it was a terrible impression. But <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Time can be rewritten. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was combining it with the Peter K tears like chicken <laughs> absorber. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, but you're right. I, I, seeing some conflict is always well. It's going to sound very pretentious, but I read in a book a, a while ago, like a screenwriting book, that uh, drama is conflict. But it is true, isn't oh. it? That it it's often it often makes for for uh, more engaging stories when even the close friends have a bit of tension so the doctor Mm. and ian i think carried most of the conflict among the sort of central four for the first part of the series but it's interesting to see barbara and ian a little bit but yeah though we'll see you soon thanks for watching take care bye-bye